Hello. In this lesson, we're going to create hatch drawings. If you'd like to follow along, please go to your sample folder, Chapter 6, and open the model named Hatch Model. So when this file opens, you'll see we have a semi-complicated, kind of a nice revolved shape with quite a little bit of detail, some nooks and crannies and things like that on it. So what the hatch drawing command does is later on in your pipeline, if you need to send out or create some technical drawings, maybe for a presentation or perhaps to get a quote or something like that, it's very nice not only to do a two-dimensional drawing of your object, but to also apply shading or a hatch pattern to indicate different types of materials and different thicknesses and things of that nature. In order to create a hatch drawing, we're going to need a line drawing of this particular part. And that's really easy to make in Rhino. We just select the object. I'm going to go to my top viewport. And we'll go to the curve menu. We'll select curve from object. And we'll select section. Before we go ahead and tell Rhino where the section should lie, we'll look at the command line here. So we've got extend section set to no. That's going to be on set to current layer. We do want to set join curves to by poly surface. What that's going to do is take all the curves, and even though there's a lot of different surfaces going on here, it'll join them into one. So any curves from individual surfaces, it'll treat as one piece and join them all together. So once that's selected, we'll go ahead and type zero. That way we know we're putting the cross section right down the middle of the object. And it's going to be projected from the view we're looking at. So we're looking at the top viewport. This is a revolved object, so there's really no difference depending on the view we look at. If you're trying to dimension a different type of a shape, maybe something that's more rectangular or more of a box shape, then you may get very different looks depending on the view you get to. And that'll be sort of up to you to decide if you want a top, front, or right view, or what have you. I'll hold down the shift key and drag off to the left, making sure to extend beyond the object. If I only pull the line to here, it'll only draw a cross section to this area. So anyway, I'll draw and drag across the object. And I'll click. You see the screen flash and I get this yellow line. I can now draw a second line if I'd like. And if I wanted to, I could draw a line in this area and we'll get different views. Every time I click and drag, it's going to draw new cross sections for me. So that's plenty for now. Let's go ahead and look at those. So I'll just hit enter to apply the command. Let me go ahead and switch off the command and I'll look in perspective for just a moment. So you can see we've got this cross section that represented the section through the object in this direction. And then we have sort of the full length cross section this one and this one, and that represents a look looking down the object. For now, I'll go ahead and hide this cross section. And we're going to work with this section here. So there's a couple different ways you can do the hatch command. So we have all of these curves joined together. I'm going to take this group of curves and I'm going to explode them. So now they're a group of individual curves. And we'll be able to put a hatch on both of these. The method is just a little bit different. So if I select this object, and under my drafting tools, you can see I have a hatch command. If I click on that, it immediately fills the object with a solid hatch. And this is a little bit different in Rhino 5. You get a preview of what you're getting here. If I switch to the style they call hatch 1, then I can go ahead and change the scale. If I want to make that, a let's say, a scale of 12, and give that a pattern rotation of zero. I can do that. If I want to make that a bit larger, maybe put a 45 in here. I can make lots of different changes to the style of it. If I click different patterns, it gives me different breakups of material. I'll go back to pattern one, and I'll just hit OK. So as you see, that fills that in nicely and gives it a much more professional kind of a look. So I'll reapply the command again by hitting the space bar. Now this time I've clicked on boundary and set that to yes. And I can drag a box around these parts. If I press enter, now Rhino is going to kind of go into that Boolean curve mode again. It's going to ask me to click inside a region to keep. But this time, because I have a closed set of curves selected, it will actually give me a result. So now I can go ahead and it gives me the same options. I'll just go ahead and click OK on that. And that completes that section for us. I'm going to unhide those circles that we created earlier. 
That's these circles here. Let me go to our four view viewport and we'll click and make the right view active. Make sure I have both curves. Now I'll go to the transform menu, orient, remap to C plane, and I'm going to click in this front viewport. So as you see, as soon as we do that, it goes ahead and completes that for us. Double click to enlarge this. And now we're going to go ahead and put a hatch in this object. We'll click inside this area to keep. And because we're looking at this at a different view, I'm going to go ahead and put a slightly different shade pattern in there. And I can make that a negative 45 degrees, so I get a very different angle to this. So we have sort of a nice technical drawing looking down the front of this object and looking down from above on this particular object. And that completes our look at creating hatch drawings.